Hello, I'm Joshua Farnsworth and welcome to my traditional woodworking school here in Earliesville, Virginia. In this video today I wanted to discuss uh, back saws, what they are and how to choose one and uh, some of the more popular ones. So what is a back saw? A back saw is a hand saw that has a brass back or a steel back or a plastic back. This, this rigid back is used to stiffen this saw plate so that you can have a thinner saw plate to uh, let yourself cut more fine joinery like dovetails. That's why this one's called a dovetail saw. This, uh, these dovetail saws have rip teeth for cutting downward and over here these back saws, are, they look very similar but they just have their teeth shaped a little bit different. They're shaped more like knives than chisels and they're used for cutting across the grain. Uh, there's different handle styles. Uh, this one, for example, is an open tote. This is more traditional, like 18th century, which I really prefer. There's some that have a closed tote. These were more 19th century, uh, give or take. And they're comfortable too. They, they are really nice. And then there is the style that's the gent saw here, which you just have a handle like this, used to cut like this. Uh, now let's talk about different price ranges, uh, the different, uh, different uh, styles of saws you can get. The lowest entry, entry level saw that you could probably get for back saws is, would be one of these gent saws. Uh, they're very affordable, anywhere from 10 to $30, and the problem is, is they are a little awkward. A lot of students here in the school don't like them quite as much because they're a little awkward to hold, less control, uh, and they don't really come sharpened very well when you order them, so you have to put a little time and effort into sharpening, and if you're just wanting to jump in and start cutting joints without first learning how to, how to uh, sharpen everything and buying all the sharpening equipment, then this may not be a good cho choice for you. Uh, but if you're on a tight budget and you've already got sharpening equipment or you know someone who does, then that is a good option for you. Now on the higher end, probably the best back saws that you can get are ones that you actually make yourself. I actually made these uh, along with one of Tom Callisto's classes here at the school. He has a class on making your own custom dovetails and tenon saws. Each student makes a dovetail saw and a tenon saw or other variations if you want to do two dovetail saws or one crosscut saw and one rip saw. And the uh, great thing about these is you've got the great material making your own saw, saw you can choose basically any material you want for the handle. Nice br brass backs, good quality steel. Uh, Tom has really nice uh, brass nuts. Other makers, you can find these parts from other makers as well. Tom's probably the most affordable for parts. Uh, there are upfront costs to taking a class, but then you've got that skill and after that, you know, you can you can make back saws and tenon saws, tenon saws and dovetail saws and carcass saws for you know, pretty cheap, as low as like $45, I think is what Tom charges for a kit. Uh, other higher end saws that are similar to that but not custom shaped to your hand necessarily, they are a little more comfortable, are uh, I think tools, tools for Working Wood has some that are pretty nice with pretty nicely shaped handles. Uh, and Bad Axe Tool Works, and then there's some other modern saw makers you can look around. Uh, problem is with those, is all they're, they're really nice, they are really expensive, two to three hundred dollars. So if you've got the money and you want a really nice looking saw like this, and it'll feel almost custom fit to your hands, then go ahead and do that. Um, but if you want something right around in the middle, like most people do, uh, there's pretty much two makers that, that and I'm talking about new saws. If, if you want to take on rehabbing old saws, there's some really great, beautiful ones. But as far as new saws, there's two makers that are, make pretty quality saws that come uh, sharp and ready to use. And that would be the Lee Nielsen saw, like this one here. And the Lee Valley makes the Veritas line of saws here. The, so these are two dovetail saws. Uh, now, as far as the superficial things go, uh, I, I really like the, the, maple, the curly maple handles here on the Lee Nelson. I also like the, the walnut handles here on the Veritas. They're nice. The Lee Nelson has a, 
a traditional brass back, which I find really beautiful, and it's got brass saw nuts, just like, just like my custom-made ones. Um, the Veritas uh, has a plastic molded back to it, which it doesn't bother me a whole lot, but I, I think I prefer the, the brass back. Um, let's see, they're both comfortable. Uh, not as comfortable as something that's been shaped just for your hand. You, you'll never know though if you've never tried one of these, they're still pretty comfortable. Uh, the, as far as performance goes, that's the most important part. Well, let me talk about price first, because uh, if the Lee Nelson costs about $125 plus shipping from Maine, and the Veritas costs about $70 to $80 plus shipping from Canada. And incidentally, if you do take a class here or you're registered for one in the future, you can always contact us here. Uh, the, both of these companies offer students of our school a discount. So if you've got a bunch of planes and saws and everything you want to buy, hold off and, and uh, wait until you register for a class here. That might just save you a whole bunch of money. But uh, as far as the performance of these saws go, well, the, I think the Lee Nelson works a little bit better. The Lee Nelson has a thinner saw plate I believe it's about 0 0.014 or 0.015 inches thick. The Veritas saw plate is about 0 0.019 inches thick. And that doesn't sound like a big difference, but when I actually put them to the test, sawing down the straight lines, as you can see in this video, the, uh, the Lee Nelson has slight, slightly better and thinner kerf uh, than the Veritas, and a little bit cleaner. They both tracked well, tracked straight, comfortable. Um, the Lee Nelson was easier to start. The Veritas was a little bit more difficult to start. That could probably be remedied by, by changing the angle of the, the first few teeth there. Um, but then the Lee Nelson seems to cut faster and with less effort when you're going down into the wood. The Veritas, you have to bear down a little bit, and it makes this high-pitched squeaking noise as you're cutting, uh, which is not a huge deal, but... If you're having to squeeze your handle to cut down a line, it's going to compromise the straightness of your kerf. You want to be able to hold it nice and loose. So a saw that is properly sharpened and with a nice thin plate will allow you to hold very loosely on the tote so that you can get a nice straight kerf. So I would say that the Lee Nelson is considerably, considerably better performer than the, Lee, than the Veritas. But you got to ask yourself the question. Is it worth it to you to spend $135 as opposed to like $90 uh, for this saw, for one that, that uh, performs a little better and looks a little nicer? That's up to you. I personally, I, I like to, to have a whole variety of back saws here so students can try them out uh, and see the difference. But if you want to take my word for it, I, I think the Lee Nielsen is a little bit better way to go unless you're on a tight budget. So I... Hope that's been helpful to you, and I hope to see you come take a class here. You can check out uh, the accompanying blog post for more information on this test and uh, some links to where you can find compare prices for these different saws. And uh, if you could like this video, that would be great, and leave some comments, ask any questions, that would be great. So thanks for watching. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, workshop tours of amazing traditional woodworkers, and tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my free traditional woodworking forum. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started in traditional woodworking. Enjoy!